and the pigment down. Watercolor is a very forgiving medium for playing with, and, I, and that's what I like about it, and it's very versatile. It's very easy to get these dark to light shades with just water. Like that. Can you kind of see that? How I did that? Yep. So you grab a, a paint brush loaded with color, and you lay it down, and then you clean the brush, dab it on a piece of, um, on a piece of, you know, just uh, paper towel like that, and then you pull this stuff over like that with the water that's on the brush. And suddenly you've got like a shading. You can add more pigment to it if you don't. So basically I, I grab paint and then I dab very quickly because this stuff will dry. This paper sucks this paint, right, uh, the watercolor up very quickly. So if I want to work with it, I got to work fast. This is my favorite part. It's very relaxing. If I ever go crazy, I just want to sit in a robe in a mental institution and watercolor all day. Zen watercolor. Mm hmm. Let's see how dark that is in comparison to what I had laid down over there. That's because I grabbed pure pigment right off the top of this thing right here. So I probably want to add some more here. You just use the water to move the color around for you. It does the work for you. You don't have to worry about being too careful. It's one of the things I really love about watercolor is that shading is one of the easiest things to do with watercolor because it lends itself well to it. See how dark that is compared to the pigment that was there before? Yeah. And you just dry, you just pull it right down with water, with a watery brush. Not too watery. Like I'm dabbing it very quickly, dabbing it there, and then grabbing this paint and just pulling it right down. Basically doing it anywhere these fold over so that it gives it the appearance of going under and underneath or over something. And if it's already wet, it'll just bleed right into the wet parts too, so which is nice. That's another thing, you can pick up paint too with a wet with a dryer brush. In case you have too much water there. It's very easy to grab some water and just move it over. Look out look at the bristles on that brush. You can't see them, but they're just sticking out. I'm very rough on my brushes. Not sure how much time we have, but I'm going to try to get this colored before we say goodbye. Or 15 minutes. 15 minutes? That sounds good. I should be able to finish this in that time, but I might not talk a whole lot while I'm doing it. Never underestimate the white of the paper as well. One of the things I love about watercolor is that the white of the paper underneath is what gives it its, its brilliance, its color, its um, richness. So 
know, using that white to denote highlights is rather easy. Okay, here's the tricky part. I always color his face with a um, kind of a skin tone, and I've got something here that I pre-mixed a long time ago that might be perfect. Let's see. Might be a little too orange. So we'll add some of this over here. See how this stuff just kind of comes right up? Plus, this type of plastic is just great for this kind of thing because it, it, it beads up as water. And it's disposable, so like you could have thrown it away, but instead it's got a whole new life as a palette for your watercolors. You don't need a fancy tackle box or anything like that to do watercolors. Don't let anybody fool you. I think you call them art bins now. Art bins, yeah, I love those. They're expensive though. Yeah. This is, you know, this thing is from a generic... Um, uh, uh, Swiffer package thing. Right. Yeah, it had like uh, Walgreens brand Swiffer refills in it, which, you know, is pretty... Swiffer in and of itself is pretty wasteful and horrible, but just pushing the dirt around. But anyway, I have a Swiffer at home, and I use it every once in a while <laughs> to clean up. I like the Swiffer wet. I think that works. Yeah, the Swiffer wet's really nice. It does pick up a lot of junk. How often do you lay down a layer of water and then add the ink to it? Um, it just depends. Like with his face, I'm trying to be subtle so I can go back in and add some more of this dark shading that I've got going on here. It looks very orange on the screen, but if you look at it, you can lay down water. Now, some people will actually take their, their watercolor paper and treat it with water before they even start. And just it affects how the paint is you know, absorbed how the pigment is absorbed by the uh, watercolor paper, basically. See how I'm picking up the pigment there so I can get a nice light tone there on the side and then I'll grab some straight paint, pigment off the top of this thing and lay down a heavy that I will then pull out. So some of that some of that teal or not teal, uh, some of that facial color kind of bled in there, but you get the idea. So this is the way they used to color comics back in the old days was with watercolor. And then they'd have to color sep everything, do the color separations in CMYK for printing, and that's when it would turn into dots. And they'd have to figure out a way to reprint all the different colors. And that's part of the reason why those old comics are so, the colors are so garish and bright and bold is that they were using straight watercolor, sort of like what I'm doing here, and then trying to repro reproduce it. The colors would come out a little too dark or a little too um, garish. So I'm letting the face dry a little bit while I'm working on these other areas. I've got a little bleed over over here I can probably take care of real quickly. With a little bit of straight water, you can pick up all that paint right there and then dab it off that. And then go back in. It's like it never happened. It's amazing. Of course, I've got a little blue paint on my brush, I think. Just adding a weird color to that. But. 